Hello and welcome to the Brecon Beacons, an area of outstanding natural beauty. We're here at Hills, a restaurant renowned for its amazing burgers, banging flavour combos, crazy stacks, all using Welsh PGI beef to form some of the best burgers in the land. And I'm so excited because they're going to show us how to produce a restaurant standard burger at home. So let's get in there and find out what they're all about. Service, please. Hi, Owen. Hi. So today you're going to show us how to make a restaurant standard burger at home. I am indeed, yes. I'm really looking forward to this, but what are we going to need? Right, well, first and foremost, uh, some really good beef. Fantastic. Uh, which has been minced and rolled into balls there. Uh, we've got a halibut, bun, which we've toasted off. Fantastic. If you can't get halibut buns? Um, any sort of sturdy bun that'll hold up to a juicy burger would be perfect. Excellent. And then? Uh, we've got two different types of cheese. So we've got Monterey Jack, which is a really good melting cheese, oh, with a good cheese pull. And then some American cheese, which gives you that creaminess. Talking about uh, the beef, what kind of beef are we using here? Uh, so we use PGI Welsh beef. Fantastic. Um, that gives us full traceability of the meat down to the animal it was taken from. That's amazing, because that's really from farm to plate sort of situation. Yeah, and that's really important to us. What cuts have you got running through here, if you don't mind sharing with us? That's fine. In the restaurant, um, to achieve the right balance of fat to meat, yep. uh, we use three different cuts. Yep. Um, we use two parts chuck, yep. uh, one and a half parts beef short rib, Fantastic. and one part sirloin. Now uh, that's what I wasn't expecting. <laughs> yeah, and you don't need to go for those cuts at home. You could just go for something like the short rib and the check. Um, the main points being that you need really good fat content? That's right, yeah. If you think of a really good steak yeah. with the marbling running through it, that fat is where the flavour's coming from. So you want to achieve something similar in your mince. You could go to your butchers and ask for a specific cut to be ground down for you. Yeah, yeah. Any good butcher should be able Fantastic. to do that for you. And what kind of coarseness would you like on the mince there if you're doing this at home? Um, we have a medium grind on ours. Um, but you don't need to be too fussy, really. We're rolling them up into these balls, okay. um, which are weighed out to 85 grams or three ounces. OK, fine. Um, and then what you want to do is to get those balls rolled out, two per person, yep. um, put them on a plate, cover them with cling film, and get them in the fridge for at least an hour before. So why do you do that, Owen? Um, well, unlike a steak, which you want at room temperature to cook, we want these to be cold so that the fat content is cold and doesn't melt too quickly in the pan under the really high heat. So, really hot pan. Really hot pan, as high cold as you can get it. beef, effectively. Yeah. And essentially what you're saying, that just locks in all the flavour and all the moisture from the fat. Exactly, that's exactly Excellent. what you Excellent, that's do. a really good top tip. So remember, 85 grams, three ounces, get it in the fridge an hour before you want to use it, and then cook from the fridge? Uh, yeah, directly out of the fridge, yeah. Fantastic. Nothing running through there, no seasoning? Nothing but beef. We'll season Excellent. later while we cook it. So you've got the pure taste of Welsh PGI beef coming through this beef burger. I'm really looking forward to uh, the kind of burger we're going to cook today, because you guys call it a smashed burger? It is a smashed burger, So what yeah. does a smashed burger actually entail? Like In its simplest form, we are squashing the patty. OK. Uh, we do that directly onto a hot griddle, which is about 280 degrees. Wow. Um, we smash that directly onto there just to get that really good crust on it. Fantastic. And what do you need to smash burgers at home? Um, so an improvised way of doing this at home, yep. we just need uh, a few pieces of greaseproof paper, um, your balls of beef, and a plate or a, a heavy pan, really. So we'll place another piece of greaseproof paper on Fantastic. top of there. And then we'll just put our weight down I on see. top of the plate and get that as flat as we can. And you can see... Fantastic. So that's a nice, thin patty A there. nice, thin patty. In my mind, I thought you had to put a lot of force onto this, but it's literally just controlled press. It is, To get yeah. a thin patty. Yeah, a nice, Fantastic. even, thin patty. So it's the same so size all the way two? through. Two patties in every burger. So what that means is you're getting even more flavour into this burger by having that amazing crust on four layers. So two on each burger patty, creating even more depth of flavour in this burger. So. We've smashed the burgers now. 
Ready for the pan? Ready for the pan. So we'll make sure the pan is really hot. Okay, no oil at all in there? No oil at all. A non-stick pan uh, is perfect. If you haven't got a non-stick pan, then a bit of beef dripping okay. or some rapeseed oil that can take the high heat. Fantastic. So the take-home message here is really heat up your pan to a really high temperature, the maximum temperature effectively, and keep oil, if needed at all, to a real minimum. Exactly that. So if we now get the beef into the pan and we'll get it searing on that one side. So we now need to place these burgers into the hot pan. Um, and while they're sizzling away and getting that really good crust on that one side, we need to season. How much salt are we putting on there? Um, it's quite a healthy amount of salt on here, but you're only seasoning the one side of the okay. burger. So effectively, we're putting the seasoning for both sides on one side. Adding more salt to this dish is only going to elevate the flavour. We've got some telltale signs that this is starting to create the crust. We can see the edges catching a little bit and some pockets coming up in the beef where the fat is melting Excellent. slightly. And that crust is important because that's flavour, effectively? It is, yeah. It's, it's full of flavour. It's adding flavour to this, this really good beef. And if we flip those over, you can see that lovely crust on that side that there. That looks now. incredible and already amazing. But we're just going to add to this now, aren't we? To get our cheese. The um, first layer just has American cheese on yep. there, and then the second layer will have the Monterey Jack and some American cheese on top of there. Now that the cheese is on there, and you can see it's starting to melt slightly already, we need to stack the burgers on top of each other. Okay. Grab the bun lid and pop that on top. Putting the top of the burger bun in there now? Yes, we are. Yeah, we want to get some heat through there, soften that bun, and get the cheese melted to the top of the bun as well. Oh, fantastic. So it just holds everything together. It holds everything together and makes everything really nice. Be a little bit careful because it will get hot. Tiny splash of water in there and seal that in so you get the steam staying inside there. It helps the beef stay soft. It helps the cheese melt so you get a really nice melt on the cheese. Fantastic. You'll see it coming down the side of the burger. Um, and it also softens that bun lid and makes it really nice and Excellent. hot too Excellent. as well. I definitely think this is a great top tip if you're cooking this kind of burger at home. So now it's time to take off the lid and yeah, I can't wait to see, it. see how these burgers are cooked. Oh, I just want to eat that now. That looks so, so good. Right, is there anything else we have to do before we We just eat need it? to get it onto that base that we Fantastic. put the burger sauce onto earlier um, and enjoy it. Oh, <laughs> excellent. I can't wait. There you have it, a restaurant quality burger that you can make at home, made using the finest Welsh PGI beef. You've got to try this.